chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Now, Paul says here, in light of all I have said in the first three chapters of this letter, I beg you to walk worthy of your calling. And then he tells us how to walk worthy of our calling. Look at verse number two. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another, in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now here Paul gives us the things we must do in order to walk worthy of our calling. Number one, with all, we must walk with all lowliness. Lowliness means a mind brought low. It is the opposite of pride. Lowliness characterized our Lord Jesus Christ. He says this in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Number two, we must walk with all meekness. Meekness means a willingness to stand and do the will of God regardless of the cost. Meekness causes you to have a righteous indignation against sin. Meekness in action is defending the truth at all costs. Number three, long suffering. Long suffering is a long temper, meaning it takes a long time to make angry. Number four is forbearing one another in love. Listen, Christians must have the patience toward one another, which God has shown to us. Number five, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That's wonderful. Verse number four. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now, one body refers to all believers from Pentecost to the rapture. One spirit is the Holy Spirit who baptizes each believer into the body of Christ. One hope of your calling refers to our hope of receiving our glorified bodies. One Lord refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. One faith refers to the truth given to the apostles by Jesus Christ himself. One baptism refers to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One God and Father of all refers to God's fatherhood of all believers only. He is not the father of unbelievers. Sonship comes only through Jesus Christ. God the Father is the father of all who are his by regeneration. Verse number seven. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up upon high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now, Jesus has given every believer a gift or gifts, special abilities out of his rich storehouse of gifts. And he has distributed them according to his will. Some believers only have one gift, while others may have two, and whereas others may have three or four. But nevertheless, every believer have at least one special ability given to them by Jesus Christ. And when every believer functions in the gift or gifts God has given them, the body of Christ functions well. Also, God has set in order the fivefold ministry consisting of both men and women in the body of Christ to develop believers from babyhood to full maturity. All right, look at verse number 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom 
the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, we see here the importance of every member functioning in their right place. When every believer functions in their proper place, the body grows and flourishes in love. Functioning outside of your proper place in the body of Christ causes the body to become dysfunctional. It is imperative that every member of the body of Jesus Christ function in their proper place. I right, look at verse number 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feelings have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, Paul says here that we are not to go and pick up some of the sins we used to commit. We are not to go back to our old ways, but we are to walk in the spirit. We are to live a life that is according to our new nature. We are a new creation in Christ and we are to act like it. We have to continue to renew or refresh our minds of who we really are. Listen, the battleground is in the mind. The enemy throws many thoughts, which, which are ungodly thoughts at our minds. Therefore, we have to constantly renew our minds, keep our minds focused on the good word of God so that our spirit man will stay on track. All right, look at verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak Every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, Paul tells the, 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 the Ephesian believers to stop lying. Just that simple. Stop telling lies. He instructs them to be truthful to everyone. Then he instructs them not to allow their anger to cause them to sin. Quickly resolve whatever needs to be resolved and walk back in harmony with your brothers and sisters in Christ or with your husband or wife. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Never let up on the spiritual battlefield. Never take a step backward. Don't allow the enemy to gain a single yard. Always keep the devil on his heels. Listen, if you give him an inch, he will take a mile. Don't give him nothing to work with. Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. Listen, righteous living consists of honest labor for the things you obtain in life. He says here to the Ephesian believers, stop stealing, get a job, and take care of your needs and the needs of of others. Verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Listen, at no given time are we to speak things that are displeasing to God. Every time we open our mouths should be to edify. And if we do this, we will always find ourselves ministering grace to the hearers. Verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now he says here not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Now how do a person grieve the Holy Spirit? A person can grieve the Holy Spirit by lying, stealing, being lazy and not working and so on. And why shouldn't we grieve the Holy Spirit? The reason why we shouldn't is because the Holy Spirit seals us until the day when he will present us to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now, Paul tells us what not to do and what to do. He gives us here some principles for Christian living. We are to be kind, tender hearted, always with one another. And we are to always forgive one another. 